OK. Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. My name is Lars Eichstedt and in this tutorial video I want to show you how to set up Symphonic Orchestra in FL Studio. So this video is part of a tutorial series on Symphonic Orchestra. Uh, for more information about this tutorial series um, you can visit the Facebook page or also browse through the videos in this YouTube channel. Um, in this tutorial series I show ways and techniques how to make the sound library sound more realistic. Okay, so um, before you start to set up anything inside uh, FL Studio, make sure that you copied the Play VST DLL into your VST plugins folder. If you're unsure uh, which folder that is, you can go to Options, um, File Settings, and there is the VST plugins extra search. Uh, folder. So make sure that you copy the DLL into that folder. All right. So then we uh, right click on one of the slots, and then we choose either using insert or replace. Uh, choose more, and then click down to refresh fast scan. Then we get here play listed as a new plugin and uh, FL Studio also tells us one new plugin was found. We click the little checkbox so that we have the F symbol right here. And then we load it in that instrument. Very quickly what that uh, dialog actually is if you don't um, know it. Uh, it's basically um, the dialog where you can select what um, uh, which, which instruments you want to have in your uh, list when you load in new instruments. So uh, you can uncheck everything that you have here when you have something that you don't need or you have some, in my case I have Harmer or Poison demo versions and I don't use the demo version so I unchecked the boxes right here and um, then they disappeared. Sometimes quite good. Okay, so then uh, after you checked the box for play, let's close the dialog. And then we um, load in play. There it is, as usual as any other instrument. Sometimes uh, if when you open it up the first time, it can sometimes take a little while. Okay, so then here it is. Um, one quick tip here, if you um, don't really know how the interface of Symphonic Orchestra works, you can watch the overview video I did on this library and they, uh, you learn also uh, how the library is organized. Um, that could help you to better understand what we're doing in a minute. Okay, so now let's load in a couple of instruments. So go to the browser and there use, yeah, why not? choose the bassist slabs. Oh, I forgot to put in the dongle. What quick moment. Okay, so there I put the dongle in and we are ready to continue. So I go to the browser view and choose, for example, the basis. Um, then the cellos. Um, and the last thing, the viola, for example. Okay. So now... Um, we have the problem then that when we set up play like this, we get only access to the instrument that has the MIDI channel number um, one. So 
so in order to be able to l um, get control to the other instruments we have to use a plugin inside of L Studio, the so-called MIDI out plugin. Um, when we take a look now at play, we see that play loaded as in all our instruments in the Omni mode. Uh, using this mode, you can also get access to the other instruments here, the basses, the cellos and the violas, but uh, most of the time you want uh, maximum control over every patch that you load in. So what we do here first, if play sets us everything as Omni, we um, select our MIDI channels and after setting it up we then now uh, load in this plugin here, the MIDI out plugin. So this plugin here is designed to um, communicate with the play engine using the MIDI channels. So what we will do right now um, is copying the MIDI, this MIDI out plugin as many times as uh, patches we uh, loaded in here and then using the different MIDI channel numbers in the different MIDI out plugins we can then get access to the other uh, instruments here as well like the cellos and the violas and have everything in separate tracks. Okay, um, so to do this we first of all configure this MIDI out plugin um, so that we have the configuration uh, that is uh, needed to uh, get the commun commu communication between play and the MIDI out plugin and then we will just duplicate the MIDI outs so we don't have to configure uh, every plugin uh, every time again. So first of all what we have to do is uh, choose a port number for the MIDI out plugin and for the play engine. So using the port number um, we make a connection between the MIDI out plugin and the play engine. So we choose port number one uh, with uh, holding down the left mouse button and drag it up or down so we can make any port number we want but we drag it up to port number one. Okay so now uh, we have to give the play engine the input port here um, so when the MIDI out plugin sends a signal from its output port 1, it goes into the input port of play. So when the, the two ports have the same number, then there is a connection between the MIDI out and the play engine, or Symphonic Orchestra. Um, to do this, we click on this little gear wheel right here and get into this dialog right here. Uh, we have these three tabs right here at the top. If you don't see that window here, you have one of the other tabs selected. You then click on the settings tab here and then you get into this dialog here. So here we have the input port number. And here we also drag it up holding the left mouse button um, input port number one. So now we have a connection between this MIDI out plugin uh, this MIDI out plugin and the play engine. So we go out of that menu and when we now uh, play something here with a MIDI out plugin we then can hear that we control the basses. If we increase the channel number now let's say to 2 we can then get access to the violas and same, oh no sorry, cellos were the cellos and at channel number three there are the violas and like this you can get access to all of the instruments. So what we'll do now is decrease the channel number to one again and before we duplicate the MIDI out plugins uh, two times more uh, we configure two of these knobs here uh, for uh, later MIDI uh, automation of two control changes the CC1 for modulation and CC11 for expression. Don't worry if you don't know right by now for what these MIDI control changes are for. During the uh, tutorial series we will use them a lot and uh, basically they're needed to create the realism that's needed. Uh, they are one part for the realism that is done. 
All right, so right click on the knob and say configure. Then uh, we have the full name and the short name. Um, you can type in the full name. In our uh, example, we will first set up modulation. So we can type in, in the full name modulation wheel and in the short name mod. The short name is uh, the name that is shown in this um, little box underneath the knob. It's actually not necessary to fill in the full name um, field. You can do it if you want to, but you don't have to. Okay, so then let's choose the controller number CC1. And then with pressing enter or return, we can toggle through the different fields. And then once more, enter, we get out of this dialog. And actually, there should be a name right here. We can go in it once more. Okay, for a strange reason, it didn't accept it. So uh, we choose the one again and click on accept. And then now we see there is a mod uh, assigned to that knob. We do the same thing at the for the second knob, right click configure for the expression. So now I skip the full name field and only use the short name because it, that's the only thing that uh, is showed. That, that we can see and then choose the control number 11 and accept and then we now have modulation and expression for later use all set up yeah and now what we the left last thing uh, that we have to do is uh, click here we uh, click play and go right click clone these media outs two times um, then we just um, give them the unique channel numbers. So this one is channel number two and this MIDI out channel number three. And last thing, rename them using right click basis or you can also hold down the shift key and left click on the name and you can then um, rename them as well. I prefer that method because it's faster. Okay, and now if everything was right, we could now, when we click on the violas and play something, get the violas here, the cellos, and here, the basses. Okay, so one last thing that we want to make a quick look is uh, how to use multiple instances, because very often you need more than one instance, because the 60 MIDI channels can be um used very very quickly and you are running out of channels then and you have to use another instance well it's very simple you just use another port number for for the other instance so for quick demonstration we will insert another one choose so we have a better contrast and different um choose uh, from the percussion metals glockenspiel uh, load it in then we clone this MIDI out plugin, rename it to Glockenspiel. Oops, not so. All right. Then, hey, what's that? Don't want that. Okay. So, um, yeah, what we then do now is we have the Glockenspiel in the second play instance has a channel number one. So we go to the Glockenspiel MIDI out, give them channel number one, and then we increase the port number to two, for example. Then we now have to make the connection to the play, uh, to this play instance. And so we click on the gear wheel and choose input port number two. And then we have the Glockenspiel in here. You can already see when I click here the MIDI out uh, keys here, that the keys here uh, are also already moving, so the connection is made. We only have to go now to the room where red white keys are. And there's the glockenspiel. So that's how you set up Symphonic Orchestra inside of Play. That's how you use multiple instances. And that's it for that video. Um, hopefully I see you in the uh, upcoming videos. And um, goodbye. Okay. Do
Hello.